In a narrow stone pit under a crusher chute, one jammed boulder suddenly shifts and the entire stacked rock pile begins to move at once. Never, ever enter a confined pit beneath loose, unrestrained boulders to clear a jam. Control blockages from outside the collapse zone using tools, barriers, and controlled release methods. Rock piles behave like stacked masses held in place mainly by friction and interlocking contact points. When a jammed boulder is disturbed, its weight transfers into neighboring stones, reducing friction and triggering a chain shift. Any tension on one rock can also change the direction of force, pulling a boulder sideways and undermining the stack. Treat jammed rock pits like unstable slopes. Stay out, control the release from above, and keep all clearing work outside the collapse path. Inside a busy workshop under an aging metal roof, the overhead frame flexes one time too many, and the ceiling suddenly starts coming down. Treat overhead structures as high-risk zones, require inspections, control crane, and roof loading, and establish protected areas below so workers and equipment are not positioned under questionable frames. Roof panels and trusses carry load through a network of beams designed for specific stresses. Repeated travel and vibration add dynamic loading, causing fatigue, loosened connections, and progressive bowing. Once a key member or joint exceeds its capacity, load redistributes suddenly, overloading adjacent sections and triggering cascading failure. If the roof is part of the risk, treat it like an active hazard. Inspect, limit loads, and keep clear zones beneath overhead structures. On a cramped mooring deck packed with steel fittings and running rigging, a tension chain suddenly fails and recoil energy sweeps through the work zone. Never ever stand inside a snapback zone around mooring lines or chains. Maintain clear recoil corridors, use marked safe positions, and control tension changes with disciplined communication. Mooring chains under winch load store energy as tensile strain across the links and system. When a weakened link fails, the stored energy releases instantly, driving the chain backward along its tension line. The chain recoils through the same corridor where tension was applied. In tight deck layouts, bollards and fair leads can redirect recoil paths unpredictably, widening the danger zone as the chain strikes and rebounds off fixed equipment. Assume every tensioned chain is a loaded spring. Mark the snapback zone, step out of the recoil line, and manage tension only from protected positions. On a busy store dock where trucks and pedestrians share the same space, a forklift creeping forward loses for visibility behind a tall pallet. Never, ever drive a forklift into a blind walkway. Stop sound warnings and use a train spotter or barriers whenever pedestrians can enter the travel path. A tall pallet creates a blind zone where hazards cannot be seen directly. Forklifts have quick acceleration and strong pushing force even at low speed. Tight dock environments leave little buffer distance, and without separation lines or barriers, pedestrians can enter the travel corridor before clearance can be visually confirmed. If you can't see notice, you don't move. Use spotters, horns, and physical separation to keep forklifts and pedestrians from sharing the same lane. Inside a crowded fabrication shed, a suspended steel beam drifts sideways and contacts an aerial lift positioned too close to the crane's travel path. Never, ever place aerial lifts inside the swing, drift, or travel range of suspended loads. Separate work zones with exclusion lines, coordinated lift plans, and clear communication before any crane movement. Suspended beams behave like pendulums. When a crane slews or stops, the load can lag, drift, and continue moving due to inertia. Even small contact transfers energy into whatever it touches, and an aerial lift's long boom amplifies motion through leverage. Once interaction occurs, the beam's momentum and the lift's flexibility create compounded movement that is hard to arrest quickly. Overlapping paths turn routine slewing into unintended equipment-to-equipment -equipment force transfer. Keep cranes and lifts in separate worlds. Establish exclusion zones, control load drift with tag lines, and coordinate every move before steel starts traveling. On uneven patio paving, a rolling scaffold loaded with loose gear suddenly shifts and the entire tower begins tipping during descent. 
Never, ever climb or descend a mobile scaffold that isn't stabilized. Lock the wheels, secure materials, use outriggers or anchors, and verify level footing before anyone moves on the tower. A scaffold tower is stable only while its center of gravity stays over its wheelbase. Loose gear placed high raises the center of gravity and makes the structure sensitive to small motion. As a person climbs down, shifting weight adds lateral force and vibration, which can move the load and push the center of gravity past the base edge. Once a wheel unloads, the tower rotates around its tipping edge and gravity accelerates the fall. Treat mobile scaffolds like tall carts, level the base, lock and brace the tower, and secure all materials before climbing or moving. Inside a steel melt shop, a furnace charge looks routine, until a sudden reaction turns the opening into a rapid release of heat and energy. Never ever stand in the line of fire during furnace charging. Verify scrap for moisture, sealed containers, and reactive contamination, and maintain protected positions with controlled access around the charge zone. When certain contaminants enter a hot furnace environment, rapid expansion and chemical reactions can occur. Moisture can flash into steam almost instantly, multiplying volume and forcing material upward. Sealed containers can rupture from heat and pressure buildup, releasing stored energy in a short burst. The furnace opening becomes the shortest exit path for expanding gases and turbulent flow, pushing heat and energy outward. Distance and shielding reduce exposure to this fast directed release. Charges can react at any moment, screen the scrap, control the line of fire, and keep all positions protected before the load enters. In a cluttered repair bay, a raised car shifts on an uneven two-post lift, and the entire load suddenly tilts off-center above the work zone. Stabilize every raised vehicle with certified supports. Use proper arm placement, arm locks, wheel chocks, and secondary stands so unintended movement cannot turn the lift into a tipping hazard. Two-post lifts support vehicles through arm contact points that must be balanced and locked. If arms are uneven or not fully engaged, applied forces can rock the vehicle and shift the center of gravity. Once the center of gravity moves beyond the safe support area created by the arms, the load begins to rotate and slide. Momentum carries the tilt further as gravity pulls toward the lowest side. Secondary supports and correct arm locks prevent small shifts from becoming full instability events. Lift is not stability by itself. Lock the arms, chalk the wheels, add stands, and keep the bay clear so a shifting vehicle never becomes a falling hazard. In a cramped kitchen prep room packed with stacked containers, one bucket full of soup lands wrong, and the entire counter turns into a sudden spill zone. Never ever lift, stack, or shift heavy liquid containers without secured lids and a stable surface. Control the load, clear the space, and prevent fluid surge from turning handling into a spill event. A full bucket carries both mass and a moving fluid center. When set down on a cluttered surface, small shifts can tilt the container while the liquid continues moving due to inertia. That slosh changes the center of gravity mid-motion, increasing tipping risk. If a lid slips or a rim catches unevenly, the liquid surge can spill outward, spreading across smooth floors and reducing traction instantly. The hazard escalates because fluid motion continues even after the container stops. Treat heavy liquids like moving loads, secure the lid, stabilize the surface, slow placement, and keep the floor dry so one slosh doesn't become a full zone hazard. In a busy fabrication shop, a tall octagonal housing stands upright on a narrow edge. Then one adjustment shifts its balance and sends it tipping hard toward the floor. Never, ever rely on balance alone to hold heavy vertical components. Block, brace, or fixture tall loads so they cannot tip, and keep the tipping arc fully clear before any repositioning. A freestanding housing on a narrow base has a small stability footprint and a high center of gravity. When pushed or rotated, the center of gravity can move past the base edge, creating a tipping moment. Once that tipping point is crossed, gravity accelerates the rotation downward, and the object falls through an arc that can extend beyond the base. Hand repositioning adds unpredictable force direction, while floor clutter reduces escape and control. Proper blocking and stands widen the base and prevent the tipping moment from developing. 
Treat tall components like unstable partitions, brace them before touch, control the tipping arc, and use fixtures or stands so the load cannot decide its own direction. Now, don't forget to share what you learned today in the comments. Your insight could save a life. Take care.